So the model that I'm going to be walking you through is uh, a people first, property second strategy. With rent to owns, there's two uh, general approaches, actually three. Um, there's a property first, and that's kind of a classic one that I think uh, a lot of people know, where you buy a property that's below market value, maybe a bit of a distressed property. You rehab it, you reno renovate it, you add some lipstick to it, essentially force the appreciation, put it up on the market, but instead of bringing on those good old tenants and you know toilet things, you bring in a family that can't qualify for a conventional mortgage that needs the rent to own route. I call those scenarios more of an exit strategy because technically you're buying a property, you're rehabbing, and your exit is to rent to own it rather than your entry point. For me, a, rent, a true rent to own, a risk-free rent to own is one where you find a home buyer who, for example, has had some sort of a setback. So a financial setback, uh, usually related to uh, a death in the family. Perhaps they lost an infant. Perhaps a loved one uh, got really sick back home and they were sending money to the family trying to uh, recoup them. And they lost sight of their local expenses here. And that, then, of course, their credit starts to fall down. We have people who've gone through accidents. They walk out on the street, they get hit by a car, they lose their memory for six months, they go into the hospital, they're not working. Their bills start to pile up, their credit goes down. So we're working with people who have had some sort of a single issue, like a one-off, a personal setback that caused them to lose sight of their finances. And we're human, life happens. And it's been some time since that issue happened to them. And they started to save up. They went back to work and started to save up. And everyone has it in the back of their head that you need how much to get a personal residence? How much of a down payment do you need? 5%? You guys are thinking as investors. You guys are thinking as investors. Typical residential needs 5%. And that's what a lot of people are operating from. Now, they think everything's great. They accumulate their 5%. They go to the bank. Say, I've got 5%. I got a job. I'm ready to buy. The bank checks their credit. Guess what? They still haven't resolved some of the collections items from the time that they had their setback. They still have some R9s on there. Maybe they had to file a consumer proposal to get out from under that debt. Maybe, you know, the husband stiffed the wife and she, when he divorced her, she was left with all that matrimonial debt. And the only way she was going to get out from it was claiming bankruptcy. How long does a bankruptcy stay on your credit? Seven, oh, you guys know that stuff. Exactly. But she doesn't know this because she's an average consumer. So she has 5%, a great job, and she has these credit blemishes. The bank says, we can't help you. You're going to need to come back or you need 20% down because you're a high credit risk. So they get discouraged and then they find rent to own. A lot of real estate agents introduce uh, home buyers to rent to own. A lot of mortgage agents are now aware of the rent to own path as well. So these home buyers, they know how long it took them to save up that 5% and they're working really hard to get out from their situation and they really want home ownership. They're tired of renting and the banks won't touch them. They need some time to build up better credit history. They go the rent, the, the rent to own route because rent to own offers them a few benefits. So we deal with those types of people. So we figure out what is the situation with those people? What is it gonna take for them to become mortgage ready? Indicate, you know, basically qualifying for a stress test and getting all their ducks in a row. And we work it backwards from there and we <coughs> set up the rent-to-own program to get them there, to fill in the gaps. In a property-first scenario, what you're, st what you're kind of stuck with is, first of all, you're acquiring the property, you need to have capital to do the renovations, you need to have the stamina to deal with the renovations, and then you put the pro property up on the market and you wait and a mortgage payment is due. You're looking at some applications. Oh boy, the mortgage payment is due in two weeks. You're looking at some applicants. Yeah, that's one not, not so good, that one not so good, that one not so good, but this one is the better of the bad ones. I need somebody in that property ASAP. I'm gonna take this person because I want somebody else to take over the mortgage payments. So investors who are holding a property and are trying to use the exit strategy as a rent owner are motivated to get somebody in there rather than the right people. They're operating from a place of property versus people. When you work from a place of people, you minimize your risk. Why? Your property can be anywhere. You could have the best possible property, but if the people stop paying, what happens? 
it's not the property that pays for itself, it's the people. So you want to have people in a rent to own that are not just financially committed because in a rent to own they're coming in with 5% down. When they go house hunting to pick a property in their budget, they get those butterflies and they get that emotional connection. When I have an emotional connection and financial commitment, is my risk up or down? Bingo. That's how we manage the risk with rent to owns. We want people first. Those people get a budget, we screen them, we qualify them, and then they go house hunting within their means. So they're looking at properties that make sense for their budget. And then we screen those properties to make sure that they, like we triple check that those properties make sense.